Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're gonna do uh, something a little bit different today. We're gonna do a, what's called a food chain challenge. So basically you start off with no bait, uh, no lures. Idea is to get your own bait and then trade up from the bait to the next size. I'm not gonna go much farther than that. Maybe some sometime later, if you guys are interested in doing like a real proper food chain challenge, we start like really small and then work up to a giant predatory fish. Today we're gonna start off with nothing and we're gonna see if we can't get ourselves a meal to do a catch and cook. So it's a scale up from the food chain challenge. Wish us luck. It's actually a little tiny bird egg. Now I don't for a second think that the bird lay the egg down here on the ground. So it might have fallen out of a nest or it might have been dropped by a predator, but it definitely looks like a little blue robin's egg. So I'm gonna leave it here in the forest. And I know there's a big misconception that if you actually touch an egg, the bird won't come back and pick it up, which is totally untrue. Though a bird's not really gonna care for an egg that fell out of the nest because it doesn't really know how. It can't just sit on the ground and incubate it. So I'm gonna leave it down here in the ground and we're gonna monitor the situation and see if a bird doesn't come back and investigate. My guess is it's abandoned it. It's well off in the spring now. If it uh, hasn't hatched yet, it's probably no good anymore so that's a little bit of a tragedy but it's kind of how nature works right i do believe most places you look in the wilderness you will find some worms except for way way far in the wilderness worms all came from europe you really got to find where fishermen have been fishermen dump their worms left over when they are done fishing and then that starts a new population of worms so anytime you're near where people will fish you should be able to find worms so we're going to flip this log over here and see what we can find if not, there should be some insects, grubs, maggots, anything like that is all fair game in the food chain challenge. Oh, there we go guys, a couple of worms that'll start us off. Uh, there's lots of minnows hanging out in the uh, waterway too, but we really don't have a good way to catch any minnows. So I think what we might have to do is devise a system for catching minnows. We can do that a couple of different ways, but I'm not going to do that right yet. There's always uh, resources around. By resources, I usually mean garbage. So we could find a coffee cup. Um, I've seen a bunch down here already. Ideally, we'd have like a two liter plastic bottle because I've seen those work before, but uh, I haven't seen any around yet. There's always trash laying around this thing. There's a line laying around. Anywhere people fish, anywhere people hang out, there's always human refuse and it's always something that you can use in a survival situation. I'm just gonna use um, a couple split shot and uh, I got a uh, snap swivel here. We got our mystery tackle box. You guys use the code uh, Beardsman, you're gonna get your first box for as little as $10. So every, every month you get a new box and of course what's in the box is a mystery, hence the name mystery tackle box but the thing is that if you were to buy all this stuff off the shelf you'd be paying 40 percent more so it's all at a huge discount and they've got tons of different things for all kinds of different fish bass pike trout walleye you name it so where you're going to want to cast here there's a couple little deep hole pockets so there's one just over here you can see a stump in the log you want to be on the other side of that there's a nice deep hole there. And then there's like a little channel that comes in to this little cutout. You can fish along in that channel. If you got your polarized glasses on, you can, you'll actually be able to see the fish down in there, so. And then with me, I just work all these pockets. All right, guys, let's see if we can't catch a fish. We're gonna go hungry if we can't. Scott's trying to catch some minnows over here. He's got a Tim Hortons coffee cup. If you're from the US, you don't know what a Tim Hortons coffee cup is. What's a coffee cup? And he's uh, got some bait in there, some shrimp. He wants to trade up to a minnow. I think that's gonna be a better bet. So he's hovering over there right now over his primitive minnow trap. So far, they don't wanna go in the cup. There's nothing. They're not hitting <laughs> He can't get one to go in.
tried to stand over it, and so when they go in, I'll just grab it real quick. That didn't work. Kind of figured it wasn't going to work. So now I'm just kind of set out there, and I put some line attached with a hook, attached it to the cup. Now I'm just going to wait till they swim in there, and then I'm going to pull it up real quick, and hopefully there'll at least one in there. They're all over that cup. They are. Probably if you if you pulled at one point, even if they don't go in, they probably, you might scoop one up. I'm kind of waiting for there to be a big, huge ball right in front of it right now. You think that's a strategy? You got to get a oh, minnow first? Yeah. A live, a live minnow that's wiggly. A worm is uh, not working. I put a uh, float on. Yeah, it's hot. It's going to be, it's going to put the fish down a little bit. You might get a minnow because it's yeah. just, it's too, too much movement for a fish to ignore. Oh, wow, that is like so much drag. <laughs> Did you get one? No. Did you get one? I don't think so. <laughs> No. I got some extra holes punctured in the bottom there. I got a rock and I got, you know, somebody's refuse line. We know all about finding a refuse line on this channel. There's a whole bunch of minnows down there that are eating the bait that Scott dropped down there. So I think this is going to be the strategy here. We're going to drop that down right into the bait area. And then we're going to be able to pull this rope straight up once one goes in there. I bet Scott that I was the master, master baiter. <laughs> of course, they're not even anywhere near the bait right now. They're all like some random spot over there. I'm getting closer though. Oh, they didn't like my voice. I gotta stop talking. Oh, that was so close, dude. You actually scared one to go in it. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. Freaking had it. That's super frustrating, man. My idea with the coffee cup hasn't been working too well, so I've been looking around and I've ended up finding this pot bottle here. So I'm gonna turn this into a minnow trap. So what you wanna do, you cut off the mouth right along this line, then you invert it and stick it back in. And it'll hold itself into place. When the minnows try to come in, they won't come out because they'll go up towards the top and the sides. And it will act as they'll try to find their way out, they won't be able to. So we got some crab meat here, it's a couple days old, so it's actually been, it's kind of stinking now. But the minnows seem to be eating it down there. So I'll just kind of squeeze it out. If you ever seen artificial crab meat, it shouldn't be doing this. And just have some in the bottom. Where you put the lid back on and kind of press it. So it's in. Then I'll throw some rocks and stuff in there as well. So I'll weight it down and then put it down on the bottom. Just a little bit of weight to hold it down. So basically the principle is that those minnows think that they can get all the way through it. Like if you use the coffee cup idea that I was using, they don't want to go in because they don't see a way out. So they avoid going in to begin with. But with the clear, uh, glass plastic then they think they can go all the way through so they go in anyway the cone shape is really what fools them because they can't figure out how to get the X Y Z axis they can't figure out how to get that all lined up to get the out well some do but most of them kind of get stuck up in the corners of the funnel which is why it's called a funnel trap this is just a primitive funnel trap we're doing lots of primitive things today primitive well, it looks like uh, it's only been like a couple minutes and it looks like we've already <laughs> been successful. So that's the strategy, man. Scott's just gonna pull her out now. We're gonna check on the good news. I can see one trying to fight its way out. I don't yeah, see one I can now. see one. See one? Yeah. Oh, cool. I can't see him. He's anymore. right here. No, oh, he's hiding. He's trying to get out. Oh, he's yeah. all, it's all cloudy because of the, the fish goop. Yeah, he's right here. Cool. You see his tail and well, stuff. Pull on, let's see. Yeah. Keep seeing his head. I'll come up here. All right, we don't want to lose him. Nice. Only one? Yep, so far. Let's see if we can't catch a fish with a minnow. Nothing else seems to be working. We got trope bait, we got crab bait, we got worm bait, we got master bait. So if you're in a survival situation, yeah. <laughs> find a plastic bottle. Works really good. But you gotta get some bait. So you could probably find like a worm or something. If you didn't want to use a worm for bait, you can crush a worm up and just mash it in there. Any kind of bug, anything like that. I've done know. it with potato chips before. Potato chips? Yeah, because yeah. in survival you have potato chips. But I mean, like you could, you could use it pretty much anything you find. Yeah, true. Like any kind of any kind of food-like thing. 
Hey, we got one right there. Gotcha. So we got a built-in minnow collector too. So you just pour all the walk, all the liquid out there, and then you're gonna have a minnow in your hand, and you're done. Welcome to the food chain challenge, everybody. We're trading up trash to treasure. We're gonna start off with refuse right up to dinner. Oh, guys, I'm still using my worm. So far, not any luck, but the minnow containers are down there doing work. I mean, if we could just catch all those minnows, we could eat those. There's lots of protein in that. Doesn't seem to be paying off right now. Things could change at any moment though. In this food change challenge. You got one? I did you, it. Do you have a bite? We'll check this bait out now, see if there's still a minnow on here. And of course it's gone. Fish took it. We got another minnow? You gotta stop losing the minnows on me so I can get my, my land in water. The worm is definitely not working. They're just not going after it, but it's really promising to have a bite right away on the minnow. So fish just jumped right where you had your uh, thing. Yeah. So get the line back out there, man, because we don't trade up, we don't eat. All right, guys, we're in business. We got another one. Uh, now I get to, now I get to fish. Oh, it's a good sized one too. Nice. As long as we don't lose them, we'll be good. What I'm gonna do is hook this guy. Oh shoot! Oh, that was too close. Oh, I almost lost him. I'm just gonna hook him right, right in the back of the head, just real lightly, right there. You get one? I would want to get him in. Teach him? I, yeah, just teach him. Get him right in. <laughs> there we go. Nice work. My hook's down his throat. Oh, somebody else lost him. That's hilarious. That's a free hook. Yep. That's a food chain challenge. Now we uh, got a spare hook. I'll let you take it out first there. I'll grab my pliers. Pliers? Over there. Nice little brown here. Right in the corner of its mouth. Here. Had someone else try to catch it and got another hook out of it so now we got a free hook we get to eat oh don't lose them i, I ain't losing them. i got your quarterback back here in case you do uh the hut oh we got a stringer nice dude we're ready today all right let's uh 100 make sure we don't lose this guy let's see where we're hooked in let me keep nice and fresh where's the end of this thing right here did you loop it Oh, you put it I together. I threw it into a loop. <laughs> like, there's no end to the stringer. It keeps going. <laughs> close it. Cl quick, 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 quick. If you don't close it, we don't eat. Guys, it's so tense. Yes, we did it. Okay, yeah, now we got to hook this up to something yeah, right. so we don't lose it. <laughs> well, that's the minnow for the win. Glad we had some options there because uh, I don't think it was going to happen with the worm. But we're going to keep trying. Got a couple worms left. Um, not chopping any minnows. I might have to put some more uh, enticer in there. And see if we can't get another brown. It'd be nice to have two brown trout for lunch, but we can probably manage with one. I mean, that's what the challenge is all about, is getting two, well, one for each person, right? We need to catch a full meal, otherwise it's not really trading up. It bounced up a couple times, and it kept pecking, kept pecking, kept pecking, and it was between our two floats out here. It's really hot, really warm water, so they're staying out in the deep stuff. I mean, the water's nice and warm on our feet, but that's not good for fishing. Try using some gills, see how that works. It's a survivor trick. I learned that from uh, watching Zach Fowler. Fowler's maker in mischief. He went 87 days surviving by himself and he used fish gills to catch other fish. Because that's really the only part of the fish that you can't eat. You can eat the bones, you can eat the brains, you can eat, eat the whole thing. But the gills, for some reason, fish, other fish like eating gills. I never figured it out, but Zach did. We got a couple of trilliums uh, back here. There's a white and a purple one. That's our provincial flower, it's called. Anyway, they're protected. Can't pick them or anything like that. I don't know why you would want to, but very pretty flower. Very common in hardwoods. All right, guys, I'm just going to wrap this trout up in bacon, and we're going to put a little bit of adobo spice on there just to flavor it up a little bit. Hopefully, we'll get the bacon crispy, but I don't think it's honestly going to happen, but it probably doesn't matter either. And then uh, just going to wrap this up tight into the foil, and then we'll throw it on the stick stove.
All right, guys, we're gonna make some guacamole. We're gonna do the world famous, well, locally famous guacamole. This is the recipe my wife uses, and she serves it as a potluck. You know, when you peel potluck and everybody brings some stuff? Well, she brings guacamole, and everybody loves it. So there's some salt and garlic powder in there. I'll, I'll put the recipe down in the description if you guys wanna try it, you can think it's any good. So anyway, um, ratios, I don't know. She doesn't know either, well, she does, she knows. I shouldn't say she doesn't know, she knows. I'll list that down below. So we got an avocado and she said, I don't know if this avocado is going to be a good avocado. <laughs> She's like, it's mushy, right? So you don't know if you're gonna get like a really good avocado or if it's gonna be like rotten on the inside. So we might be uh, out of luck. And I've never made this recipe before, so I'll let you know if it turns out, if it turns out then anybody can make it. It's good. Oh, it's good? Yeah, it is good. So we're in luck. So what you do is you save the pit for decoration, you put that on the side. I don't know why you do that, but you do that. She does that, because of character, I guess. We're just gonna scoop out the avocado. We're going to add two uh, spoonfuls of salsa, and we use, I think it's called President's Choice Salsa. That's two chunks of that. And then the only other ingredient you need is a lime. And uh, she'll measure this out of a jar, but we happen to have a fresh lime from the last shoot that we never used. There we go. We don't want it too limey. Too limey. Where's that from? Is that a thing you call uh, people from the UK? Limeys? Is that what it is? Limey. Yeah, you limey? It's limey. Glimey? I think so. I thought it was limey. But how's that fish looking, Scott? Well, just flipped it over, so hopefully that bacon's cooking on both sides. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna snack on this first, and then we're gonna dine on the trout. I'm just interested to see if I nailed this recipe or not. So the trick is, what she does is she doesn't really get aggressive on the on the dechunkifying it. So it, it kind of looks like chunky guac, and you get like the different textures in your mouth. It's good, but it's a little limey. <laughs> it's the only thing I didn't measure. It's good though. We could probably knock it back a little bit with some salsa, but I won't. A little limey. So get the ratios correct. Get, uh, wanna jump in here, Scott? He's gonna grab the, get us a couple bowls of nachos and we're gonna, we're gonna give this a try because we're still waiting on that. Still waiting on that trout. My lovely assistant, Scott. <laughs> Not an assistant anymore. Full time, full time YouTuber right now. He's uh, he got knocked out with the uh, lockdowns, so he's happy to come out, show me his fishing holes. That's good. Really, really good. A little limey. I think it's perfect. Do you think it's good? Like, if you like limey, it's good. It's not too 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 much. You can taste it. It's there. Yeah. I probably should have done the limey to taste. But it's good. You guys can grab this spice on the woodedbeardsman.com. It's the Wadova spice. It's famous worldwide. Everybody loves it. I actually checked the reviews the other day. It would had uh, like 4.85 stars out of five or something like that. Well, I, I give it 10 out of five stars. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> the thing is about it was that the rating was funny because it was like excellent or perfect or excellent, good, fair. Um, and then there was like poor but there were no like second to none. It was like, they skipped that. So obviously people were just like mad at the channel. Yeah. Or were just like throwing it in. Cause it like, it completely missed the third last category, which doesn't really make any sense considering there was like 500 or some ratings. Yeah. Like when you miss that last category, it's usually not because 
you didn't like it. It's just you just didn't like the idea of the channel or something else. Anyway, that's what I'm going by. Most of the ratings were really, really good. And it's positive news because that's how it's she goes. It's a great goes. spice. Everyone should get it. Scott's not being paid to say that. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I just absolutely love it. So, as predicted, the bacon was never going to be crispy. Yep. Next time I'm going to bring a pan for that. I don't think it works as good. The, the mini stick stove doesn't work as, as good as the big stick stove. We use the big one. The big one works really good. It's got enough space. It's just not as portable, right? Yeah. This one is, I mean, it's probably not really, really portable. I, I wouldn't backpack it. I would do it on a small trip, but I wouldn't do it like a big, big trip. Yeah. Um, but uh, you've had this before. Yep. So the good news is um, we don't have to be afraid of using this because, well, you, maybe you do because you get to keep the rest of this. Perfect. For home. But you have to, we have to put some on the trout. Well, I'm making pancakes tonight then. You know, hundred percent, you have to, or you save it for breakfast, but you have to make pancakes this week. Oh yeah, I Literally. will be. So that's, it's sealed. They're all sealed now. I have, I have lots of jars of this stuff. We were, Zach and I were talking the other day about making a, um, adding uh, maple sugar to this to make a sweet wadobo. That'd actually be really good. But Zach was like, He's like, but some people don't like maple syrup. I'm like, dude, what? Only crazy people don't like maple syrup. Who doesn't like maple syrup? I've never heard of such a thing. Maybe it's because I'm Canadian. I don't know. I've, I've literally never heard anybody. He's like, well, some people like the Aunt Jemima, right? So they like, they don't really like, they like the sweetness of it, but they don't like, like the maple flavor of it. Anyway, I, I don't know what they're talking about. It's all good. This isn't going to, it's not going to pour that well. Which is the shame because we're not reading off a board, so we'll have to yeah. flip flip a coin who gets to lick the board at the end. <laughs> I'll let you do it because I'm taking the jar home with me. Yes, that's true. I also have a lot at home, but I hate watching the stuff go to waste because it is good. So much effort goes into it. Yeah, and it's really good. All right, so we'll dig in. We uh, we should have caught two, but we caught one, so we have to share on the same on the same piece of board. <laughs> it should be pretty well. It's cooked all the way through. Well, the trout's cooked, yeah. Yeah. The bacon, like, am I seeing still eat it? Oh, no, I'm tilting the wrong way. I was going to catch you. <laughs> I was going to I was gonna dunk it. Maple bacon, I'm telling you, man, there's nothing better than maple bacon. If you can find maple bacon in the store, the bone. Just got to watch out for the bones. Mm. Yeah, you can't be too aggressive with the trout or the bones are all going to fall off. That's good, actually. You weren't sure if you were going to... He's like, I'm not going to eat that much because the bacon's not crispy. Like, well, just because the bacon, it didn't look like it was fully cooked. No, it doesn't really. It's not crispy. I mean, can't get around it. And it also ate a bunch of the guacamole. That's true. It was filling. That was a good meal. Good survival meal. Well, we really did start off today trying to use the Mr. Tackle Box. And then that didn't work, so we decided. I decided to reinvent the theme of the video to go with, uh, um, what's it called? Food what chain. What's going on? Food chain challenge. Because they, they weren't really hitting the baits. But if you guys want to use the Mystery Tackle Box, use that code Beardsman. Because it helps me out. we got to get to some places where that tackle will really excel. You yeah. know, pike or bass or these little trout, like they're not going to go after the big lures. So definitely the getting that live bait. I'm I was surprised that minnow trap really worked. And you can find worms anywhere, so that's not a surprise. But the, to be able to catch minnows like that, like we tried lots of different things. Try that little cup. Try to trap in the cup that didn't work. But the um, I kind of figured the cup wasn't gonna work. But. Well, I had a couple in there. Yeah. Just when I pulled, they swam out. It's like you have to figure out how to get rid of all that water so that it doesn't like create that momentum loss that you don't want so they outsmarted us 